Let me throw that question back to you. What is reality? Reality television. Okay. Reality television is unscripted entertainment. Uh, if it's unscripted non-entertainment, we call that documentary. Uh, what if it's both? Like the things that we've been discussing in class, like, you know, is it real, is it not real? So it's we've... actually one of the hardest parts about creating a reality show is the casting, which is actually so, where yeah. we're at right now, and it's so important. All of these people have, like, had a psychological analysis done on them before they've even gotten to this point, and they've met with somebody who's decided, well, in this situation, this is what you're going to do, and we need to put you with this personality type because you're going to butt heads, and that's going to be what's going to be good television. Well, since you said you never wanted to do a reality TV show, shows like don't you feel like you're selling out like, yes sure absolutely yeah, because you know what selling out allows you to work on your own projects you i am not going to sit around and wait tables and work 55 yeah. hours a week just so that on my one day off i can do these projects believe uh, me i mean we're still writing on the side i mean we have some great great narratives whenever we can finally get a narrative pitch again but right now it's just nobody's wanting to hear them Could I pull you guys aside? Just because we're going to have a story for the 5 o'clock news tonight. Sure. <laughs> okay. And all of a sudden, the nice winter comes. had a pretty comes. crappy winter, oh, too. Oh, we did. Yeah. Um, our story is only about two minutes long. Sure. So whatever you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> Hate them or love them, reality shows are infiltrating primetime television. And some argue they're decaying the quality of entertainment. So... Why are they so popular? We hear from a few industry insiders about the reality behind reality. Every show you've ever seen, think about how much worse it could be in the hardest part of your brain. Like if you went, man, if I was directing Fear Factor, I'd do this. That's what we're doing. Gil Ripley and Dave Roberts say that networks are busting at the seams with reality because they're often so melodramatic, it's hard not to watch. People want to see really horrible things happen, unfortunately, because you can't take your eyes off it. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. No, no, don't change that. So there, there's a lot more writing that goes on than people would think, and just for that purpose, to create drama and conflict. The two writers, by the way, are in discussions with several networks for a pilot reality series, which they have to keep secret. They predict we'll see an entire cable network My name is Gil Ripley, and I am a writer. Uh, I've been writing TV shows with Dave Roberts for about eight years, and we formed Can Do Productions. We like to push the envelope. Right from the start, we had a comic soap opera that was a little edgier than most. It was a minor success, and we eventually sold a rock and roll sitcom to a Japanese network. And making that money allowed Can Do to continue moving in the direction we wanted to go in, which was writing, 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 writing. Now we're at a point where it looks like Can Do Productions is actually looking at something that might be picked up. Keith is writing a piece on the whole project. It's a series called Psychotic Episodes, uh, where each week we mash up two TV shows. The pilot episode is a mashup of Sex and City meets Golden Girls. Action. A great woman once said, give me one friend, just one, who meets the needs of all my varying moods. I'm lucky enough to have three. That's my oldest friend, Constance. Never married, popped out two nauseating kids about 40 years ago. Sadie, on the other hand, so cold and frigid, her gynecologist expects a light to go on when he looks inside. Leather pants, now that's a look. Put it on women, hello, yeast infection. Yeah, nice buns. Last summer, I wore leather pants, and I pulled out a loaf of bread. Cut. <laughs> Let's go, the room. Let's go. We're done. Thank you so, so very much. Bye-bye. Uh, I think it's going to be all right. Now we just got to wait and see how it goes. Someone happened upon the 
genre of uh, reality and it hit a chord because it's human to want to know how you do it, how you feel. Well, at the end of the day, we just want to be entertained with something mindless, simple, and compelling, even if it kinds of, even if it disgusts us a little. I don't think reality is that different than any other part of the television landscape. There's good and bad, and I think it's a nice addition to television because I think, quite honestly, the sitcoms and the dramas were getting a little tired, and reality sort of came in and kicked their ass for a little while and, and maybe made them be better. And that's what reality shows are doing, is basically playing to the low common denominator that we all have. Sure, and we all have that, but should we? You stop utilizing other muscles. If the lowest common denominator was a muscle, it could kick the shit out of anything else. This is Roman Gladiator days. You're going in and you're going to fight the lions, and you are fully aware that you're going to be out fighting lions. Nobody's telling you that you know a bunch of puppy dogs are coming out of that gate. You're fully knowledgeable. Lions are coming out of that gate, and they're going to rip your ass apart. I think 100% television is going to keep pushing the envelope in reality programming. And there's no bounds that are going to be too far. If you're a junkie, you're always looking for a bigger high. In television, the viewer's going to always look for a bigger high. You know, Patty Chayefsky in Network was absolutely right. And at some point, you're going to see executions on television. My little condo complex, very quiet and very yuppie, you know. I'm at the newsstand, and I see a whole thing on sex tape shockers. And I'm like, wow, it's got to have something about Rick Solomon in here, right? So I open up the magazine, and as I'm reading the article, all of a sudden I see my name in here. I had never done an interview with Globe magazine before. So that's how surreal my life's gotten, man. It's like, you know, every time I open up the paper, I'm like the world's expert on fucking celebrity tapes. I love it. But at the same token, I wish I was making more money. That's why the reality show, baby. I always get confused when I come here. Hello. I believe in Dave and Gil. Together, the two of them will definitely get work. That's why I'm pushing reality. That's why they've they've got to you know try the next the next boat, leaving the harbor, jump on, or you're you're going to be standing on the edge of the you know the harbor. I was hoping we could get moving with whatever you guys are working on now. Have you thought any more about what we talked about? Well, I think that because we're not from the reality realm just yet we're coming up with more documentary style ideas because those are the things we know a little better than you know shove 55 people on an island and see what happens kind of thing the minute you sit down and start talking about one they're gonna say we've heard it we've done it what next else do you have? yeah you really need you need to show up with a shitload of stuff we've got another narrative that we want to go forward with that we think is definitely gonna work I mean but we're willing we've, we've discussed the reality thing we're ready to go forward with the reality thing we're, we're uh, Dave's under a lot of pressure right now he's got mouths to feed he's got children he's got a wife and I don't want to push too hard I don't want to to disappoint Dave and let him down by not getting him meetings or getting him some work all right well we'll send this stuff over later on tomorrow oh good okay thank, thank you. you very much Bye. thank, thank you. you bye Gil. take care you guys yeah but oh. maybe i'm completely wrong because i walked in there and didn't know what the hell we were talking about she's like listen yeah, you guys gotta think about it yeah, I and like, i was like yeah i thought you were just talking about pitching reality shows and i was like yeah i thought we already talked about pitching reality shows and then you're like yeah moving out to california i'm like whoa 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 who's moving out Bill, to that california? Was my thing. Like, i'm like i'll roll with it if that's what he wants me to do i was like where the fuck is he going with this I went. And that was what I was but saying to her, like, I'll go after Did anybody ever say move to California before I... She started, I just, she said L.A. She oh, said LA. really? And since we had spoken about that previously, I think she was... Oh, I was about, just like, you know, what the... Where are you going right now? I, I was going to walk up to Grace Papaya. Are you hungry? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. It is this way, right? Yeah.
life imitates art and the internet imitates what it sees in pop culture. You know, like when reality television shows came out in real world and all these different mm -hmm. shows, what happened was all of a sudden adult.com and all these other places started bang bus came out of nowhere. Big bus, bang bus. A Street Latino, whatever that thing was. Um, and you've got the big sausage pizza. Right there now. was a total reality wave that went in. Right. What we're seeing now is like all these websites like Big Sausage Pizza where there's a pizza delivery guy. He oh, comes right. in with a hot chick. He's addicted right. to the pizza box. You know? Right. But you, know, you don't see stuff like that on television because they can't do that on television. But, but what about uh, utility workers? We should do like the utility guy. That's, that's not a bad idea, is it? Well, you know what? Rectal Rooter did that. <laughs> I'm not Rectal that Rooter? familiar with I guess I should be. It's not bad. A creative idea. Rectalrooter.com. It's Roto Rooter, and they basically spoofed it. So the guy comes in. And he's, oh, he's, oh, right. Oh, I get it. He pretends he's here to fix the pipes, but in reality, <laughs> that's the reality. Gary and I are accidental pornographers, but at the same time, we love to push the envelope because that's the kind of people we are. So why do I want to get into reality television? Because my heart, all my life, has been in entertainment. I, I feel as though I'm an entertainer. I am a ham. And uh, if the return on investments is as good as everybody says it is in this reality television, you know, world, then I'm going to make some money on this. Ten hopefuls are followed through a heightened fire academy. Jesus Christ, they get that fucking thing. Uh, uh, followed through a heightened fire academy in their desire to become a New York City firefighter. Ten hopefuls are followed through a 13-week training course set on The Rock. Wait, wait, New York City's fire we call, academy. No, we can't call it The Rock. Uh, you can't go over Fucking Sean Connery. God damn it. Well, I don't know if I like it now anymore anyway. Okay. Follow through a 13 week training course. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Welcome back. Ten hopefuls are followed through a 13 week training course set on the rock. Uh, New York City's infamous fire academy on Randall's Island. Good. Island. And can we add grueling before 13 week? Yes. Yeah. Through a grueling. Nice. How else can I describe how amazing this show will be? It's grueling. It's mind numbing. It's through a mind numbing 13 weeks. <laughs> Follow 10 homeless men as they travel through the New York City subways collecting change this week on Panhandle. <laughs> <laughs> Shuts down the whole subway system with a strap fire. <laughs> and Lucky Johnny passes out masturbating. <laughs> Well, we're in Long Island, though. Yeah, that's so. true. Anyways, how are you today? I'm great. I didn't catch your names. Dave. Dave and, and Gil. Gil. Yes. Okay, great. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, we have a company uh, in Manhattan called Can Do Productions. We had a pilot for Comedy Central that was turned down, and so we're back pitching. All right. Good. But it's, it's, it's all reality now. The nice thing is, is ours is not a challenge series. It's okay. not a comp competitive series. It's, it's more so a documentary style, more documentary just really style. following what's it's, going on. Okay, it's called um, Fire Academy, a.k.a. Uh, Probies. Uh, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to follow 10 hopefuls through a 13-week grueling training process on The Rock, which is New York City's legendary fire academy. There's no tribal council. There's no, <laughs> There's no voting people offs. off because the competition is so tough that in real life, three-quarters of the probies either don't show up or they quit. It's the only job where the interview process can, can kill, kill you. <laughs> Since 9-11, they've only hired 363 firefighters. On 9-11, we lost 354. Wow. So we've only barely yeah. gotten back to where That's we were surprising. previously. So I think we can really show the struggles that these people are going to go through, but also their commitment and the drive that it takes. And undoubtedly, if we pick 10, I guarantee you some of them won't make it to the end. It's just a fact. And right. that's just how it works. Um, in terms of it fitting on IFC, you know, because everything we do is somehow related to film, so, you know, it wouldn't work for us, but if it does, and it's somewhere, trust me, I'll be watching it. Great. Because, I, you know, you obviously have the passion it takes to make it. I mean, and you're also great pitchers, I must say. Thank, Thank you very much. Really good. For you sure. obviously uh, have a great chemistry together, and it feels like you've known each other forever. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's the awesome, um, so it's cool. But it's impressive, so. Thank you. She's willing to hear us anytime we want to come back. Yeah, we just so if we want, to maybe we also. come up with a new idea. We use TV extras as our second idea, and we come in here with two more ideas. Good idea. I'm Good fine idea. with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that too. Oh, I guess. Uh, 
Uh, I hate pitching with a passion that burns. Uh, I because I suck at it. I hear hundreds of pitches a year. I, just a startling volume. And what what never ceases to amaze me is how unoriginal a vast majority of the ideas are. Everyone sort of seems to have the same idea and everyone's looking to copy the success of someone else. I'm looking for that hook that I haven't seen or heard before and that has sustainability. A hook that is fresh and exciting. No one's done it or no one's done it in this form. Now it's like, okay, tell me what's, what's at stake here? You know, why is this gonna be better than anything that's on? What's the twist? How long is the pitch going to take? Like 20 minutes? We are out and about telling people about all our fantastic ideas. Excellent. And so what have you guys done? We still have narratives that we're working on. Our agents have been pushing us to do, you know, to work the reality angle. So the reality is big. Yeah. All, all right, so pitch cool. away. Well, basically, uh, it's called Virgin Territory. It's uh, Big Brother meets Howard Stern meets Last Man Standing. We take 10 medically verified male virgins we lock them in a house in the San Fernando Valley with nothing to watch or read but porn. No sexual contact with anybody, including themselves, or they'll be prematurely ejected. Ejected, right. Uh, <laughs> a variety of contests, <laughs> such as dildo or don't. Uh, and then milf and cookies, where our hot older mom comes by and they must eat cookies with her scantily clad. When you get down to the final two, America decides by a 900 number who gets who will to lose their virginity, virginity to a porn star. All right, bizarre, but good. You're thinking in the, in the right direction. Okay, and you see this playing exactly where in, uh, in the United States? I would pass on this as is. But I would highly encourage you to. Okay, it's called Virgin Territory. What is the what is the version we could pitch to Oxygen? Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm so off today, dude. So was I. I was like stammering and stupid. I didn't think it went terrible, but I didn't think it went great. What time's the flight tomorrow? Uh, ten. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Obviously, you know, I want him to pursue his dream, but my salary certainly isn't going to sustain our four person family for couple of years. I was 18 and I got into T. Sharper Studios, uh, which is like a really excellent acting school. Um, and I was like the youngest kid ever admitted, but um, unfortunately I have a sibling who was a bit of a thief and a drug addict at the time and stole money from my father. And instead of putting him in jail, my dad uh, did a father thing and paid the bill and I never was able to go. It wasn't even that much money, I just didn't have the cash as an 18 year old kid to send myself to school. I ended up doing it a year later in a different situation, but it's funny how you don't know what life is gonna do, you know, or bring to you, really. turn around and make this show and, and give it to Playboy, even if you're only getting 25 an episode, that's still, you know, it's a, it's a show that's sold, yeah. helps you guys out, gets our name on the air, too. We're pushing further into that meeting, obviously, with the Firehouse thing, we were actually able to play off each other a little better. Right. But I'm happy. Oh, you know, and I'm just, I'm, agree that was my constructive criticism to you, that I felt like we needed to pace ourselves a little more. I went too fast, I went too fast. You guys are pimping on a much bigger level than regular pimps? Well, yeah, because we do it on the web. We do it legitimately, and we take credit cards. And what about the girls? They don't make anywhere near what the other guys make in this thing. And that's the thing is, you know, you're either a pimp or you're, or you're a hoe. That's why we have a pimp and hoe party. That's why our players ball is pimp and hoe, because we celebrate the fact that we are a giant industry filled with pimps and hoes. In this business, you're either a pimp or a hoe. In any business, you're a pimp or a hoe. Think about it. If, if you're a, an AD on a production, you're not the producer. Producer's the pimp. You're a hoe, you know? In this situation, you own, either own the websites or you own the video companies where you hire chicks for $800 to do a scene. And with that 
You could put that as one of eight scenes that you put on a DVD that you sell. You might sell 80,000 of those DVDs at $12 a pop. Who's the pimp and who's the hoe? You know? Um, well, we've got one half of the dynamic duo here, and the other half is not. He is on... Oh, he's actually going for a fitting for a commercial that he got. And that's awesome, because he needs money, and he needs to be uh, supporting himself, and he's got, you know, kids and a wife and a family and the whole deal. You know, I'm, we're whoring anyway. We're out there doing stuff we don't want to do, so it's like, do you want to be the actor or the crew guy, or do you actually want to be writing something, just not exactly what you wanted to do? Maybe it's one step closer, maybe it's one step farther, I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it at this point, but I just have to convince myself that reality TV is not as bad as I think it is. But who knows if I can do that. What did Sam say? Was it ex expose film? I don't know if it was expose production. I don't, I don't remember what you said. You have your notes right there. Yeah. So, uh, virgin territory. When you win it, you lose it. Ten medically verified virgins. What the hell is this? I think this is great. <laughs> your wife would love them. Yeah, I'm sure. She'd be fucking thrilled. <laughs> How's it going? Hi, how are you? Very well, very well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's great. Wow, look at this flow. This place excellent. All right. Uh, my name's KB, Kevin Blatt, and I, I own a company called KB Consults, and I primarily do public relations for celebrity sex tapes. So lo and behold, here we are in 2003. A guy calls me up and says, hey, I got the Paris Hilton sex tape. I'm like, who the hell is Paris Hilton? You'll see. She's going to be very hot this year. This is her tipping point, so to speak. So we released it, and all hell broke loose. The Hiltons came after us. Rick Solomon came after me. Everybody came after me because we had acquired the tape from a roommate of Rick Solomon's at the okay. time. It wasn't kosher. There was never uh, any kind of model release with Rick or Paris or anybody for that matter. And the funniest thing happened one day. Rick Solomon called up my brother. We go by monikers on the web. I go by KB. My brother goes by D Money. So Rick calls him up. He's like, you know, these guys hung me from sex brand. I got more tapes. I got a better tape and it's in full color, and I want you, D Money, to market this on the web for me. My brother says, Do you know who my brother is? He says, No, who? Says, my brother's KB, Kevin Blatt. I'm Darren Blatt, D Money. And he goes, I'm suing that bastard. He says, Not anymore, you're not. Great. So, next thing you know, <laughs> I'm promoting One Night in Paris, which became the full color version. It's now sold over 700,000 copies. And as you guys know, DVDs don't cost a lot of money to make. The wholesale on this particular DVD was 22 bucks. Unreal. Which is unprecedented for an adult movie. At the end of the day, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. This business has jaded me a lot, you know? I would really like to get into mainstream, the mainstream world, and have a piece of a good reality television show or whatever's hot right now. Nice. So uh, I'm interested in hearing what you guys got well, going on. Help you, with that. Yeah. you guys mind if I let up a cigar real quick? Please do. Please do. Please do. Um, this is my thinking. This is how I think. I <laughs> this I actually think is right up your alley. And the name of it is called Virgin, Virgin Territory. Territory. When uh, you win it, you lose it. Wow. If you know what I mean. That's a great slogan. <laughs> awesome slogan. <laughs> Ten medically verified virgins. Males. Compete for the chance to lose their virginity to a porn star. They're visited periodically by the sexy housekeeper. By maybe the sexy cook who happens to be leaning over in the oven and you can see maybe she's not wearing any underwear right now. Every turn, every corner, they are going to be aroused. Their senses will be heightened, but they are not allowed to... Release themselves, because if they touch themselves in any sexual way or, or anybody they, else in the house... They're prematurely ejected from the house. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> That's the greatest pitch I've ever heard within two minutes in my entire life. Reality television right now is being pushed to such, you know, a degree that like where it has to go to this degree next. I mean, I'm in the shower or I'm, I'm going to the bathroom or I'm cooking something. I'm thinking about what a new reality TV show could be. And I thought about how frustrated I was when I was hungry. So I thought of American Cannibal. 
It's kind of like a survivor thing, but these people are being starved. They are not allowed to eat. They are not allowed to drink. And they truly believe that at the end of this time, somebody gets killed and eaten. I'm trying to, I'm trying to push. I, I want it to go to that next level, and I want to make sure people know that we pushed it there. I like the win. When you win it, you lose it. <laughs> we didn't even finish that because the thing about that is I, I know that we can do it cheaper. I know we can. I could find you the girls for the I show too. <laughs> really easily. So, you know, that's the other cross promotion end of it is you got, I go to the Vivids of the world. I go to the Wicked's of the exactly. world. Exactly. And say, look, I want your contract stars. I want Jenna Jameson to be here. I want Monique Alexander to be here. We can bring them and make them a little more mainstream as well as opening them up to a brand new audience. I love it. <laughs> I really do. I mean, you know what? That is an original show idea. That's fucking crazy. Hey. I'm like shaking. I can't believe he thought that was so good. I really. That's a I'm issue. having a hard time articulating myself right now because I'm scrolling through a mental index of all the things that now I have to either deal with or take care of in order for this to actually go down. Or, you know, not that anything's going down, but. That's fucking weird. We gotta get to work, dude. <laughs> so, you know, the pitch is they put 10 people in a house, right? They're not allowed to have sex. They can't come for, what was it, two weeks? I think it was two weeks. They put porn on every screen of the, of, of the house. It's fucking hilarious, dude. When you win, you lose, they said. There's a premature ejection. It's a premature ejection room. I like it. I'm, I'm down. I would like to get involved. I will fund this. I will get involved. I will throw my money in. That's how positive I am that this is going to work. So what are the things that you guys are pitching? Uh, we're pitching a couple of different uh, things. We've got uh, a fun sort of a docu-reality series that we're doing. Um, we've got a sort of risque Big Brother, if you will. Um, it's more it be fun. more risque than Big Brother. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I don't know why they bother giving them clothes at all. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's a good point. So, what, so what's your deal? You have a production company, or it's just the two of you guys, you're selling ideas, and then what, waiting for a network to attach you to a production well, company? The thing, I think we're at a stage where uh, a pilot's being privately financed okay. um, by a guy named Kevin Glass. You made porn boy. Yes. Right. Nice. Which is um, the difficulty that uh, in that we want to make sure that everybody knows that we are not porn guys. We are in the legit biz. And just, plus, you know, I, I want to make sure yourself. that... I just moved out here. I had two porn projects, sort of. You start talking to networks and it's okay to have sexy, it's okay to have strippers. It, like E's highest rated true Hollywood story is Jenna Jameson's story. By far, like double the ratings of any other true Hollywood story, but they had so much flack from advertisers. And once they see a network going that way, I mean, you know how conservative America is right now. Yeah. It just, I would just watch it. Uh, and it's a very hard project to pitch all of a sudden you feel really dirty. Mr. KB. Oh, it's good to see you guys again. All right. You know, I got home, called my brother from the, I, I was calling him from the car actually, and I said, you know, I just met with these guys. I really didn't know what they were gonna pitch me. And the one idea they have with the virgin territory is unreal. So my brother said, well, explain it to me. So I explained it to him the best I could. And I think I conveyed it the right way. But he said, you know, it's too much like other shows I've seen. And I said, I've never seen a show like that. He goes, well, it's like Seven Lives Exposed meets, you know, 
Survivor meets this, meets that. He goes, you know what? You're going to have a hard time going to Vivid and selling them on the idea. As much as they're product whores and stuff, they're very protective with their brand. I said, you know what? They had this crazy idea. People go to this island, and it's, it comes down to cannibalism. My brother says, that's fucking outrageous, dude. You're not going to really eat somebody, are you? I go, no. But that's the show, is that we don't have to. You got to see what kind of sick fucks are going to come along for this ride. It's sort of a joke, but I mean, I pitched it. And, you know, no, it's not that it's a joke, but I mean, we have a lot of ideas that we throw out just as like a light me up kind of a thing. But I don't think I pitched that because I really thought you would take it. It was almost just to like throw it out there as like this is how ridiculous reality TV is getting. But here's like maybe the good idea that we had. No, 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 no. This is good. I'm known to take things that are a little extreme. I also did Houston's labia surgery. I don't know if I told you guys that. I know. All, really? That, that, that was my baby. On the internet and everything? Yes. You knew about the, yeah, the lips? Totally okay. That was my baby. I do outlandish, outlandish stuff because I know I can push buttons. People could vote in who they want to see get eaten or who is going to be the first person that would jump on the bandwagon and volunteer to eat somebody. You know, and you get the, the interactive viewers and, and the actual surfers doing this stuff. I'm telling you, I know the numbers. I could generate two million hits a day in traffic. Most websites like MSNBC and those kind of, those are the only kind of websites that generate two million hits a day, other than porn websites. How far would you want to push it? Well, I mean, I, I don't think saying. we're going to really eat anybody. No, I, no, I think it should just all be innuendo and just see what kind of sick fucks you're going to get to show up on an island somewhere to take part in something like this. You know? Okay. My brother was a philosophy man. He said to me, because I thought you didn't want to be the porn guy anymore. And the minute he said that, that's what killed me for me. I don't even know what to say right now. I don't know. Can I have a cigarette? Yeah. Hey, look. Bottom what's, line what's his agenda? I feel like there might be some hidden agenda here. If, 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 if he doesn't want to do porn, then... Let's... I don't know. I mean, well... He wants to give us money. I'll do whatever That's the hell he right. wants to and do I'm saying, for like, right now. If we start with him here, we might be able to. Do you really think that idea can go? I don't, I don't fucking know. Are you kidding me? That was your fucking makeup, brother. <laughs> I thought, I thought for sure we were walking into a uh, let's let's get moving. I called my porn friends and we're good to go. Hey, worst things have happened. For the first time ever. Executives can write an idea on a napkin and actually make it. I mean, anybody can come up with a reality show idea. Uh, all right, let's dip people in gasoline and put them near a fire. Yes, that's a hilarious idea. You know, boom, lunch, done. Hire producers, shoot that sucker, and it gets huge ratings. I mean, what's left? I mean, I can't even imagine what's left. What, you know, auctioning off livers? What can possibly be left? Is she 14 or is she 18? That should be a reality show. Where, you know, here she is, ready to go, but if you fuck her, you could go to jail. We have some sort of a, of a, a reality show within the prison system where you have all the guys who are on death row, and one by one, they get immunity, and the last one is the public execution. Oh my God, honestly, I thought going to the strip club was a waste of time. What did Sam have to say? Well, she was all, I mean, at first when she said she wanted us to go there, I was the one that was a little hesitant about it, and she said, hey, uh, the money's green. And she's right, the money's green, so um, I'm all over it. You have a twinkle in your eye I haven't seen in months. Hey, man, it's great. We sold something. You know how long it's been? This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's going to be money coming in. It's awesome. It's great. Very cool. What's up, brother? How's it going? Hey, how are you? I'm back on your hard drive, man. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. We got a message from KB. Did you hear this thing already? No. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey guys, it's KB. I wanted to give you guys a shout out about American Cannibal. It looks like my brother D Money still wants close to $100,000 to shoot this pilot. Uh, if your agents have the deal memo drawn up for me, uh, I'm hoping to get it probably in a few days. Anyway, a few ideas about where we should go and shoot the show. It's an island called British New Gambia. It has a history of cannibalism. Do you love that? Anyway, I'm making plans to come to New York soon, so we need to coordinate. Oh, and I also have a great lead on a reality director for us. His name is Neil DeGroote. Later. <laughs> <laughs> He's already, like, researched on islands. <laughs> 
That's, and that was on the bottom of the thing. That's not an island, I don't think. Google it. What about a production company? What are we going to do about anything that's going on in New York? Like, how are we going to take care of this end for production and all that stuff? Oh, uh, he hasn't he, said anything about it. Yeah, that. he wants yeah. us to give him a call. We'll give him a call and ask him on that. I mean, if he's already working, I, I'm sure that Kevin's not the one that found an island. Can you, come on, like, what has he got? Like an Encyclopedia Britannica on the back of the strip club? I'm, I'm, I, I highly doubt it's him that found it. Unless one of the strippers is really good at geography. service production company and uh, arms in many angles of the entertainment industry um, pre-production and and production itself I guess is really our focus we too are kind of being dragged kicking and screaming into the reality world and uh, and and very pleased about it it's kind of the next wave and um, so uh, so we're certainly excited to to attack it and uh, excited about this project specifically, of course. Now, are we are we story editors on this, or are we associate producers on this, or? Well, you, you, you guys aren't Guild, right? We are. Yes, we are. You are Guild. Yes. Um, do you use other names? I mean, do you have pseudonyms, or do, I mean, h how do you normally get around your Guild affiliation, or do you? Or uh, well, I mean, the, the reality is we wouldn't be able to give you writer credits as part of the Guild because it's not a Guild game, right? right. There's no other way to put it. Okay. We'll make this work, okay? Associate producer credits, certainly possible. Um, uh, story editors, certainly possible. And how about casting? Like, do we you have don't to have deal to mess with that any, Like, because I mean, this is sort of. I mean, like, we, 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 this, this is going to be huge, okay? First of all, we're we're aware of that, right? This is going to be massive. KB is fired up. You know, this is a revolutionary piece of TV history. There's TV pre and there's TV post, and. Uh, you know, this, um, it, uh, it, it's opportunistic. It takes advantage of Manifest Destiny and the moment that TV is at right now. You guys have to focus on the specifics. What are the challenges going to be? How are they going to function? You know, how, how are the actual operations of the challenge going to work? Excuse me. Hello? Do they need more questions? Uh, yeah, he's a little vague. I guess he doesn't know. But I'd much rather him say, I don't know, than... Or maybe he just doesn't want to clue us in yet. Well, he certainly didn't do that. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we got a great art department, but I don't think there is any art department yet. So it was like all totally producer speak. Well, maybe he didn't just, uh, m maybe they're going to bring on a team that they've used pre previously, you know what I mean? I guess so. If it's seven days, we have to come up with 21 events. Why 21? We need like probably two a day and like a throwaway. Fuck. Okay. How about we? Um... There's definitely el there's the elements. There's like there's fire. Right. So there's fire, water, water. There's rain. How about we make every every event is something that's almost based on what's found on the island. First, you got to find the map. Then, once you found the map, how do you understand what's written on the map? If they spend all their time on that, they're not going to have as much time building their shelter or worrying about fire. That's good. We put food wrappers inside of the box <laughs> so that they get there and they can almost smell the residue of the food. It's so close, they can taste it. It's just so close to their reach. And what if it's like a rope thing and the skulls, the rope's through the skull and you gotta take the skull from the one end through the knot and through the thing. That's if it's, that's if it's an anchor, I'm just saying. And then you get to the end, and uh, you know it, it would just be a speed race. They could all be the same. I don't want to write a reality show anymore. Who's gonna agree to do this? Who's gonna fucking? What are we gonna do? What if? Uh, do we get away with not feeding them the day before? Before we even put them on the island? No, I think what we do is we do feed them the night before. They gorge themselves, but they also get shitty wasted. <laughs> that way they're all hung over this day of the oh, treasure hunt. Oh, that's hunts. good. That's good. They're just pissed off and they're irritated and hopefully they're puking because we get them up way earlier than we they Open thought bar. they were going to get oh, up. Oh man, that's good. Open bar previous night. People think it's really easy. Oh, well, you just throw some people in a room and you film them and you just, you know, you go and find some Amish kids. Can't be that hard. It's really not about 
as much of the idea as the execution of that idea because about 10 different people are having the same idea at the same time. But it's really difficult to protect um, the originality of a reality show idea. Look what's on the air now. Everything is a derivation of something else. If they're going to cast it, they'll do it very clandestinely. They won't put it out there that they're doing a particular format for the fear that another network could rip them off. Every single person in the entertainment business steals from everybody. So why would I give them ammunition to go out there and steal what I'm really trying to do? The ultimate, ultimate challenge, it's a fictional title. I'm going to put people on an island and make them think they're going to have to live with a cannibal family. They might have to indulge in some cannibalism. And if that doesn't get press, I don't know what the fuck will. I mean, I can make ten more tapes of Paris Hilton, and she could suck off, uh, you know, the King of Jordan. It's not going to... It's still going to be Paris Hilton sucking dick. You've never seen anybody eat people on television before, have you? Joining me on the line are Dave Roberts and Gil Ripley, creators of the show The Ultimate Ultimate Challenge. So you're looking for people that are in really good shape, right? Well, definitely. We're trying to push past what Survivor did. We're definitely trying to go further than Fear Factor did. And to do that, you definitely need people who are going to be in shape and up to the challenge. The ultimate challenge. What are some of the things that you're going to be doing on this pilot? Well, we definitely don't want to say exactly what we're going to be doing, but I, what I can do is I can read you um, maybe some of the questions that we'll be asking uh, the people who come to our auditions. We definitely, um, uh, we, one of them is, which of the following would you rather learn how to accomplish? Check all that apply. Uh, how to blow fire, how to chew and swallow glass, how to fend off sharks, how to castrate a large farm animal, how to perform an autopsy. Now, I'm not saying that those things are definitely going to be done on the show, but this is the caliber. This is where we want to see if we can, if, you know, if people are willing to push themselves to that level, they're ready to come onto our show. Uh, how soon do you need tapes, and when are you going to try to put this thing together? Well, uh, we'd love for people to get their tapes in as soon as possible. We uh, have auditions in Philly this weekend, and then our final round of auditions is in the middle of July out in San Fran. So you've got about a month to still get your stuff into us, and uh, we're not going to be leaving for about two, two and a half months. So. Could you guys do that? And be honest with me. Could you do it? Because ain't no big deal. I mean, if you can't, because... Absolutely not. No, Those who can't make other people do. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's why we create these shows, because I can't be on them. All right, guys, man. Hey, I really appreciate you guys being around uh, today. Thanks Thank you much. So Have much. a great day. Bye-bye now. Why did we wave? Both of us did it. Both of us just waved. All right, thanks. No one who I can see right now, I'll just wave at the wall. And I think the best part right now is that you, you go through all that hype and we still don't even know really what these people are going to be doing on the island. <laughs> no. What are they going to be doing? Well, it's completely rounded off and there's going to be a little bit of everything. I can't really say because I don't know. It's so vague. It was so and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Casting directors of a new reality show are promising to make Survivor and Fear Factor look like mere child's play. Were any of these questions, uh, do we have any kind of psychological profiling that's like, do, are these questions actually... Production, Miles. He's supposedly got people that are doing that. Hey, John. nobody that will do nothing <laughs> there you get whatever you're asking them to do if it has to do with either becoming famous or making money you will find someone hi my name is barbara christy bella samantha zucker andrew timothy Sydney. here's what it is these reality shows mint disposable celebrities we have a new term they're disposable they are hot one moment and then they're totally over they're like h and m <laughs> like clothes from h and m what makes you the best choice out there. I've started eating bugs 
because I heard about this. Hitting the heads off of birds and rats and things like that, but just for fun, you know. We basically are looking for someone maybe with a criminal mentality, someone that might be a little crazy without actually being a criminal and without actually being a crazy person. What makes you want to be on reality TV? Why wouldn't you want to be on reality TV? We've always wanted our kids to grow up with high self-esteem and feeling good about themselves. Watch any reality TV show tryout. I think we've succeeded, perhaps beyond our wildest dreams. There are a lot of people out there feeling good about themselves that probably shouldn't be. I'm just so funny. I don't know. I can't even explain how funny I am. <laughs> Everybody tells me I'm good looking. I, I see it. You know what I mean? I mean, I take good photos, so I think that's something I should pursue. I'm like the female 50 Cent. Seriously. People will see that and be able to relate to me and will look forward to, to having me in their homes and watching me in their homes. Fundamentally, I just want to apologize for you having to gas it. Really, really not, not your fucking job. Definitely make sure you apologize to Gil. I'm not as mad as Gil was. This is not a big deal for me, but for Gil, it's a big deal. A media relations specialist for the porn industry, Kevin Blatt says he's going mainstream with a reality television show beyond anything we've seen. Would you live with a cannibal family for a week and a half? People want to see a train wreck. People want to see really horrible things happen, unfortunately, because you can't take your eyes off it. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. No, no, don't change that. Check it out. British New Gambia. Gambia. Pretty cool. We got Neil DeGroote to direct. Neil DeGroote, you said? Yeah, Neil DeGroote. What's his name? Yeah. How do you spell the last name? Uh, what is it? D-A... What? G-R-U-T? E? Would you be willing to, uh, in order to save one of your teammates, eat one of their fingers or toes? <laughs> this is really the ultimate, ultimate challenge. <laughs> Uh, my, I think my stomach could handle it. I, I would be kind of morally opposed to it, but I, I would do it if it had to be done. <laughs> Not the thumb or like, you know, the big toe. No problem. With the bone. <laughs> With the bone. So I gotta chew it and spit it out? No, swallow it, right? <laughs> All right, fellas, I, I, I gotta get back to work. I want oh, you guys to see this. Christ. And uh, you gotta run, all right? Hey, we'll uh, just really quick, I, I need uh, to talk to you I about. Need, um, I, I, I just got I, a call I gotta make. Yet again, uh, Miles has successfully smiled his way through not answering any of our questions. Yeah. I thought you couldn't get any more outrageous than KB, and then we get the guy that KB hires. I, I wonder where they know each other from. Oh, it's gotta be shady. There's, There's some shady connection between KB and Miles that we don't know about yet. Yep, what's up, Gil? I'm just on set, man, so uh, it's gonna have to be kind of quick, all right? What do we got, buddy? Okay, yeah, host. The deal is, casting director out in LA, set up a bunch of meetings with hosts. I'm totally interested in meeting with you guys. You gotta prepare your pitches and snatch a host. Okay, well, we're at uh, Can Do Productions. Uh, we've produced can a few do? things. Can Do. <laughs> can Do. Hey, Dave, we can. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Christ, how you doing? Hey, Gil, how you doing? Hey, Gil, how you doing? There's people on an island, and they're starving themselves, and no one's allowed to eat, and there's competitions where the only person who wins gets the food. Yeah. Send them off to a cannibal island, and they're just going to starve them the whole time, and they're going to be putting them through survivor life tests. And they're being pushed. And not only are they on this island, but they're on an island where cannibalism is legal. All right, well, I'm um, glad that uh, we got a chance to talk and meet. And Well, <clears throat> I have no interest in purveying this garbage to the public. You really think that doing this and showing these people that you know how to create this craptastic reality is going to show them that you can also do this other thing, this, this sitcom thing or a narrative thing? It's Why not? Why not? Joe Rogan has his fucking pick of the litter now that he's the host of fucking Fear Factor. And those people that are, the, are, are, are producing it, you know, I'm sure that they can get a green light deal on anything else they want to do and it's not going to be restricted to reality. They're making money hand over fist on that show. And if we have something like that, I just don't know how to say it, man. Get your shit together. We got shit to do.
what we're dealing with right now is host. Okay, talk to me. We get Stallone. <sighs> Stallone is uh, Stallone's iffy. He 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 might not pan out. Um, really. But we, we're in talks with George Gray. He's the weakest. He's interested. The weakest link. The weakest link. Yeah. yeah. I do, actually. As a matter of fact, you need to borrow it. I've got. It. Are you connected with the show? Yes, clearly. But not a creator. The, the creators are the two gentlemen inside, and. I'm in production, we're carrying it out. Yet again, there was no location until this morning, and now it's at a bar. I'm in production and had their fucking shit together, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, like here comes KB again out of nowhere. Thanks, KB. I'm sure he was off fraternizing. Sure, take them off. There you go. I'll eat an oyster. I'll kill a bug. Right. But I won't kill a bird. Right. You seem like you're pretty in shape. Do you have any qualms about bearing it all for the camera? No, if that's a requirement. No. How comfortable with your body are you? I'd love to be naked You'd all the time. I do. Really? Yes. Have you ever been to uh, New Beach or have you? No, York? I went to a party um, in Vegas. Um, but it's a club out by the pool, and it's all topless. A, a, a no clue and no fear. No fear. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, I am 24 years old. See this? Domination before you get started. Okay. Guys, listen, if you're going to keep talking, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I know that you're my producer and stuff, but we got to keep it down. Here. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> you guys are so shady. <clears throat> what? Free looking strolling out of here. Love it. Really good shit. Love it. You were kind of killing us today in there, man. Yeah. Well,. Like just the drinking and stuff. Well, no, it wasn't. No, but it wasn't even that. But it was just like when we were trying to do that, and all of a sudden there's like the peanut gallery is off to the side, like commenting, yeah, dude, like, like talking, and, you, like, like, three times. and that sucks. Cause, cause, like I don't want to have to like do that in front saying. of other people. Dude, have you ever been through a smooth production process? But, but what, what does that have one? to do with it? That, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. Oh, of course, the process. What I'm saying is like, and every time, and every time I don't have a smooth production, I have to go to somebody and figure out what's going on, and that's what I'm doing right now. I, we're and obviously, you, you know, we're, we're, we're concerned. I'm, I'm feeling stressed from a lot of different angles right now, and this is not only because of you. I mean, this is because of KB. This is because everywhere I go, people think I'm a pornographer. This is because I don't want to be fucking doing reality TV. But this is what we're doing. I'm on this job, and I'm ready to go forward and make it as good as possible. Right. But I need to feel like everybody is on that same page. Okay, listen. You know what? I don't, I don't control the fucking budget of the audition. I just don't okay? want to be booming on the island or some shit like that. Honestly, at this point, like, I was so fucking angry. I can't even tell you, and I'm sorry I yelled at you, but I, I literally wanted to throw a chair. Like, it was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, we've been fucking doing everything on this. And you guys are hanging out and drinking beer, and, and it came to me, and off got stoned. Dude, sure we, did. we hung banners today. We were doing all this other little shit. Dude. Okay. Don't even get it. Yo, what do you want from me? Let's move away from the peanut gallery bullshit. Right. Rest, okay, a little noise in the fucking set. You always need a little noise in the set. Obviously. That's really not what this is about. Okay, you need a smoothly old machine running, and I understand that. That's feedback you've given me, and that's feedback I'm gonna act on. Hey. How's it going? Good. All right. Good deal. So it's nice to finally meet you. I got about an oh a bazillion questions. <laughs> I think it's uh, probably a good thing tonight to have you guys meet Georgie. And, you know, what you basically got to do is you got to pitch him on the show. Great. Great. Yeah, hello. Nice, nice to meet you. Pleasure, right, George. Dave. How are you? Hey, Dave. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. This is KB. Oh. KB, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm known for doing over the top press stuff. I did Houston's labia surgery. I don't know if you're familiar with the. Uh, <laughs> Houston and no. her labia surgery. Okay. Right after Ricky Lake had her stomach stapled, I figured if Ricky Lake could have her stomach stapled, I could cut off Houston's pussy lips. And we actually sold them. It was a whole big thing. Sold them? Yeah. Yeah, we auctioned it. It was a major, major press event. Yeah. I'm known for promoting things that are a little 
taboo. Even know the, whole thing. the show is the classic bait and, bait and switch. We're getting all these people and we're telling them that it's the ultimate, ultimate reality challenge show. It's the eco challenge times fear factor plus, you know, survivor. Um, when they get there, they will find out that in fact it is not only that, but it is American Canada. And we're going to split the four because once they are voted off, and they move out into this real hidden camera surveillance, suddenly they're like, they're on camera people, I haven't seen a story producer, I'm... They're waiting to be picked up by the level of Yeah. 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 I'm out here. I want them to see the cameras. I'm they out here. We want to catch them crying. We want to see them alone. Flipping Freaked out. out. Love that. Because yeah. as, as long as there's always a crew there, this people, whoever gets voted out, they're going to be not knowing if we're watching them. Yeah, they're going to be nervous. How are you going to make sure that the, the people don't die? Well, put Let's a bracelet on them so you know where they are. Do you care? <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, we do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we do, as a matter of fact, care. We're shooting a reality show, which we all agree is, to some extent, pseudo. And then we're going to create, we hope, a real reality yeah, show. I I'm totally cool to do that stuff as long as somebody signed up for it. If you signed up to test your limits, and now we're gonna test them, I'm cool with that. Uh, you know, and I'll have fun with it, and then and then I'll go to them. But if it's something where where I'm being cruel and somebody doesn't expect it, now that now I've crossed my own personal line. Everybody we're bringing in thinks that it's called Starvation Island, and they've agreed to be starved. So just so you essentially know. is what they've agreed to. Okay, good. Great. Starve me. All right, great. I'm a jack of all trades and I'm really a master of, of, of none. You know, I could talk about a, a lot of things, but I only know a little bit about a lot and a lot about a little. But ultimately, Gil and Dave are the people that are responsible. It's going to be their ass. They came to me. It's going to be their ass if they can't deliver. I gave them money. You know? They have to deliver the job. I'm not a TV producer. This is my first uh, foray into the, uh, the, into the uh, lifestyle. I'm good at sitting back and eating sandwiches on set, <laughs> you know? So we're four days away from going. We're four days away from seeing if this concept is really gonna work. I, I have to say, I mean, the things that we've seen them do have been great. I, I think when we get back and we talk to you guys, we're going to be very pleased with what we get in tape, and then it's all about the edit, so I think it's going to go well. Sure. If it rains like this on the island, can you imagine the contestants trying to deal with this? <laughs> I don't know how we would deal with it. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah? Yeah, let's take it to the picture. Guys, can I have everybody inside for a second, please? Just real quick. So, um, we just found out that uh, Navia Beach, which we were going to shoot at, um, fell through. They actually pulled the permit. They're scouting another beach right now. Here's where we are. It's the west part of the island, so there is no wind whatsoever. No wind. So the situation, the box situation there after five, is impossible. And when I mean impossible, it's that we're going to have... Impossible for what situation, I'm sorry? Bugs. 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 We're gonna be like in clouds of bugs. Nobody, nobody's gonna be able to work. Nobody's gonna be able to move, to open their mouths after five. It's gonna be and like all the contestants will love that. <laughs> <laughs> Make the beach work. I would eat people here. I think we can make the beach back here work because it's flatter. 
gives us more uh, gives us more maneuverability. I mean, this Did beach back it? here is better than than either of the two beaches we've seen. All right, guys, it's a fun place to sit. All right, so let's just talk a minute about what we're gonna do. We have little cards here for you, so you can keep track of the talent. Ryan or Dave, or you want to give us a little brief on each of these guys? Rishi, uh, self-proclaimed ladies' man. Thinks he is the shit, thinks he can pick up any chick in the world. <laughs> Kristen Kerr, uh, her goal in life is to be a Playboy Playmate. I shit you not. <laughs> Zachary, your citizen is mainly a jock. The whole thing is that he's a big like workout guy, he's a jock. Monique is an amazingly hot model, except she's a southern belle and does not curse. Uh, Patrick is a very abrasive character, very, very intense, likes to push buttons, and I think that that's one of the things we like about him is that he's definitely, and uh, Nicole Rue is a kickboxer, but also she's a singer, uh, definitely a, uh, anything a great once. group. Yes, that, yeah, that is her quote. quote, quote anything once. I will do anything once. They think they're coming here to play a game called Starvation Island in which they see who can last the longest without passing out. Um, we have an army medic who is working with us, Gino. He will be on site every day. Even though we're, we're doing this to them, we're still just making a TV show. So safety is first in everything. metaphor for a reality TV show is that they are chemistry experiments. You put the right elements into this big uh, beaker or test tube that is the show, and if you choose the right elements, you're going to get a reaction. Once the person forgets the camera's there, then it does become more real. There's a false sense of trust with the person shooting. Oh, I've been with this person for a week and a half now. They're my friend. No, they're not, honey. They're shooting you. And you've become comfortable with them. They're doing a job. I know how much you guys want to continue the party. Please, I really recommend you go in and get some sleep. It's really important. Concentration. That kind of rounds out our day one. At that point, it'll be a little later in the day. We may even get some nice sunset shots on that. And you the, the, these, you know, the contestants will have been up since three o'clock in the morning. They're going to wake them up right they now. Be... You think we're not getting them until nine? Ha! Uh, you mean by the time I see them, they will have been up for all that time? Yes. Yes. You're going to wake them up at 3 a.m. Yeah. And we're going to drive them all over God's creation. And hopefully and you, they will still be drunk. And yeah. you're going to tell them that they're that they're a British New yeah, Guinea. Yeah, yeah. British a good game. tool for a challenge producer is to look at like old means of torture and, <laughs> and things like that because they you can bring them down you can you can scale them back to a uh, manageable level to a uh, to a TV level and then put the contestants through it and turn it into a competition. Into when they come on a reality show, they do have to sign the release form, and a lot of the release forms are very extensive. My contract was this thick, and um, I signed like five of them. It's, it was ridiculous, you know. And I brought it to a lawyer, and he was like, "Don't do this show. Absolutely, don't do it."
covered everything down to if you pricked yourself with a needle from the inn in Paris and you got a disease and died, it's your fault. I mean, it was, it was that, that detail. What I'm afraid of is one of these days somebody dying on a show. It seems reasonable that at some point, if you're capturing people's real lives, some tragic accident is going to happen. I mean, this is reality. In, in reality, in everyday life, people die. Mike, repeat, I can't hear you. You know the best part is? Six times sick for money, six times before she even got off the boat. That girl's gonna throw in the towel the first day. I cannot wait. She might even throw in the towel right now at the opening. <laughs> in about an hour, it kind of settles down. We'll um, go back on the boat and do the approach. Uh, why don't you uh, take a seat, like I said, um, and, and relax for a little bit. I'll clear the other camera out, say, go back, give me a wide master, and we'll just be on walkie, and, you know, a 2T is two tits, a cowboy is, is right about here, uh, and ECI means I want to be inside the chin. Okay. I'm going to get in. Do that again. Squat down. Stand up. That's it. That one's set. <laughs> Scorpion, right in the sand. Oh, it's right there. See it moving? I, I really just, I mean, less activity. It's just, let, I wanted to let them be. Okay. There are scorpions on this beach. You see that? Mm -hmm. Big one. If we can get strong reactions and things happening between these guys, it'll be fine. That's gonna be something, I bet. I think he likes her. Oh, and look, Rishi's getting jealous. If that keeps playing out, Rishi's gonna be sitting like that and start boiling. We'll be using you at the beginning of this, then we'll go off you to see them doing the airplane ride. That's where we'll ID them all. And then we'll come back to you for American Cannibal. Here we go, in five, four, three. Hi everybody, I'm George, and welcome to the island formerly known as British New Gambia. You're about to meet six people who have agreed to come to this remote and desolate place to take part in emotionally and physically grueling competitions. Now, they were told that they signed up for a show called Starvation Island. They lied to them. They're not here for that at all. They're here for what made this island famous in the first place. Welcome to American Cannibal. Nice. You know, I didn't get to come on the scout and check this place out. It's gonna work for what we have to do, but with high tide here, there's almost no beach room, and I don't really know how I'm gonna set up and produce these segments on the beach at this moment. I'll be honest, I feel bad that these people are sick already, and it's an hour into this, but that's what they signed up for, you know, so I have to tell myself that it's okay, that this is what they wanted. Dave seems to have no problem with it. He's taking pictures like he's at Disney World. Which means we should have somebody find out the tide schedule. Wow. So when you come up and around this corner, you're going to see a bunch of people. Ignore them. Hey, Rishi, 
exactly what our goal was, was to be here and, and I'm stoked, man. I'm, I'm pretty into it. It's great. In 1972, Andy's life disaster, how many of the survivors were killed in the initial crash? Yeah, right. Have I told you guys the labia story yet? Yes! yes. Yeah. I don't get it. coverage is right here. I'm going to have another one right back here crossing on that one. That's going to be a uh, big high and wide master. What's that? <laughs> he, he's being talented. It's been a long day. We, you know, we're, we're tired. We haven't eaten. It's hot. I don't like losing things anyway, but when I don't have food in my belly, I get a whole other level of upset. I expected more to be um, the ginger from Gilligan's Island. I feel totally disgusting and can't wait to shower. The blonde girl, she's uh, hypoglycemic. So what does it mean? Does she need sugar? She needs sugar. Every, like, every six hours or four hours, she needs to eat something. Well, the purpose why you get in-depth medical records is so when you know a contestant that's going to a starvation-style island has hypoglycemia, you wouldn't cast that person. She told me she covered it up. No Gil, man. I'm sorry about earlier. I only apologize so much. I'm getting fucking sick and tired of apologizing. Patrick, I think, is a little too, like, intense about it, you know? Like, the way he flipped his lid when he didn't win the first challenge, I was like, whoa, you know, somebody's a little high-strung. Just try and reach KB, and let me figure out... Yeah, let me figure out something. All right. Okay. Bye. Fuck. Dennis! So, uh, KB's en route, right? To get out of here? Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to get him a flight. Everything's booked, but we're, we're getting him out of here. Okay. So, L.A. just called. Uh, there's an issue uh, with SAG and George. They went to SAG and AFTRA, told him that we're going to use George, and we wanted to clarify that it wasn't going to be an issue for him. And now, apparently, uh, you know, one of them has uh, got some second thoughts. Describe I mean, to me what we would do if we don't have a host. We'd shoot around it. We can shoot over his shoulder. Uh, you know, we can, I can get him to leave some of his wardrobe, same shirts. All we have to do is just basically say to the contestants that... Guys, I'm so unconcerned about what we tell the contestants. We could tell the contestants George has got the shits and can't work today. I don't care what we tell the fucking contestants. We don't have to explain stuff to them. If we, like, get back to L.A. and we take him to Catalina Island and we put him on the beach... All right. Uh, and and we, we look at the tapes, we figure out what the take is. We might... Well, we won't get the repartee. Fuck! Dude, just give us a moment, all right? Just 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, I did not see what happened. I heard she fainted. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. But I remember she said she was hypoglycemic. So I was like, well, she probably fainted. She's hungry in the heat. We don't really actually know what happened. She fell or something. I don't know, but she's got a laceration across her chest. Yeah, okay. Medic comes running out, trips over the log we're sitting on, and then runs down the beach to where Kristen and I saw her. She was like kneeling on the ground. Guys, come on. Away. Away. And I was so scared. I mean, I was like secretly like praying, like, God help her to be okay because she's so little. When we arrived, Neil told us if something like this happens, don't go to the situation. Just stay put. The crew would take care of it. We just stood by to see what, you know, what would happen. Clean this shit up. We're gonna take a TV timeout. They're gonna take her to the hospital in Puerto Rico. We're gonna put you guys in a boat. Quickly, quickly, please. Anything you're grabbing, very quickly. had the halt production. Neil said she failed. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to do this in front of the contestants. And um, I don't know, but Neil said she's really hurt, so I don't know. And it's totally our fault. Like, I don't even know what happened, but it's totally our fault. And that's that, brother. We're still on board with the project, but I just, you know, this is going to be kind of a shit storm for myself when I get back to New York, and I'm going to need a couple of days to deal with that, and then a couple of days to deal with nothing. So I'm not mad at you guys. I'm just. It's okay. All right. Thanks. I understand. Take it easy. Gil Ripley and Dave Roberts. We're really producing, not writing right now. I mean, we're in the deadline. And reality is the death of television. We'll be here longer than reality television. Exactly. I spoke with Gil earlier. Looks like they might not even have enough material to put together a 22-minute pilot. And this is everything they've been working towards. I mean, this is everything that they've been really working towards. So it's hard. It's hard for everybody. 
as their friend and their agent, I, I hope that they can manage to pull something out of the ashes from this. been quite a journey, has it not? You've been here for most of it. Dave and I have decided to, for the time being, do maybe our own thing for a little while. I'm not mad, I'm not angry, I'm not harboring any resentment towards anything or anyone or, you know, anything that's happened in the last year or a couple years, really. It's been quite an interesting ride. I think we almost did some pretty cool stuff. Listen, you mentioned um, the accident on the island. All I did find out was that um, she was hurt, but I already knew that. And uh, I didn't really find out exactly the extent of what happened. I, I got a number to call to find out, like, family-wise, like, how she was. I called the number. It was, like, some South Carolina number, and I never got a call back from anybody. I'm sure I'm just, like, another random guy calling up, but... I don't know. And Kevin Blatt, I've talked to him briefly. He didn't seem to know much or want to talk about it much and uh, hasn't called me back as of lately, so I really... Well, I'll just, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll land on my feet. Whatever the next thing is, is the next thing that I'll do. I mean, I, I can I can pitch on my own. I can do my own. Um, I mean, I had ideas before Gil and I came together, and I'll just, I'll just, you know, keep pitching, you know. And there's a lot that I have that I can sell, so it's... show was she on? It was uh, kind of a survivor type. Survivor type? Yeah. KB! KB! What's the story with the girl? Can't you leave well enough alone? Uh, talk uh, to Neil. He'll, talk to Neil. He'll tell you everything. Well, we talked to Neil, and Neil said that everything's fine, but... It happens. These are, these are not easy challenges. They are dangerous. And the speculation, I think, is bullshit. Why speculate? You don't know shit, I don't know shit. So it's going to make your documentary better to speculate about it? Yes, it will, as a matter of fact, make your documentary better to speculate about it, which is bullshit. It's like so many other jobs. You work the job, you meet the people, you become job friends with them. I got fucking eaten alive. It was fucking hot. 
I ruined my fucking Burt Reynolds shirt. It was fucking pretty bad. <laughs> that was a good shirt, too. What about that girl? Which one? <laughs> Imagine Survivor meets uh, Truman Show. Twelve people in a Survivor-esque setting. And whoever wins, that team wins. So we've got sort of a Lord of the Flies-esque thing with everybody who's been voted off. Whether or not they bond in the woods or they butt heads or do they form separate tribes, two, maybe three little small tribes. Right. Uh, we're watching them 24-7. Do they freak out? Can they handle it? I, I just would like TV to get a little darker in these reality ideas. You keep using the word dark, and I and I get what you mean you know what by I mean? that. Like, sort of. I mean, I use the word real.